If you're used to C++, then you'll be familiar with the std vector, which is the standard dynamically resizing array. When you come to Unreal, you'll learn about tarray being Unreal's dynamically resizing array. tarray is not a drop-in replacement for a vector. There are some philosophical differences between the two. And so let's show one of those here. We've created a tarray that has this ctor reporting struct, which is a struct I've made above here. All it is is a struct with a bunch of constructors and one destructor. And the no arg constructor, we have some integer that we increment that is static, so it is incremented every time that we create a new struct, so each one can have a unique ID. So the struct has an ID that will report, it has a no argument constructor, it has a copy constructor, it has a move constructor, it has a copy assignment operator, it has a move assignment operator, and it has a destructor, each of these logging the ID. So we can see what's happening to the memory underneath them. So if we go and test the tray, we can emplace new structs at the end of the array. So this is just like calling add, but we're using in place so that we don't have any temporaries involved. And so we create our array. If we look at it, it is empty. And if I go to the raw view, I can pin the sizes of the array. And we can see that when we in place, the array down went to one and we allocated four elements. Down in the log, we can see that we're separating each add with these dashes. And so we've called the no arg constructor and the ID was one. So if I place another one, step over, array num went to two, we called a no arg constructor, and I'll place another one. Again, no arg constructor for a new element with ID three. So this is all behaving as you might would expect. We can do remove that index one. So that means in our array, we're going to remove this index one, which has ID two. I step over that. So we can see the destructor was called for the element that had the ID number two. So far, no surprises. I suppose you may have been surprised if you're familiar with vector. So what do you think will happen with std vector C++ is a standard dynamic resizing array? So we have the same element type, the ctor reporting struct. And instead of using a place, we use the standard version of in place back, which adds to the back of it without using any arguments. Let's step and see what happens. So if we inspect the array while it's empty, it says capacity is zero, and the raw view is much harder to read than the array. But right now we have zero elements. So if we in place back, our array now has one element. And if we check the log, we call it a no arg constructor, and it got the ID of four. So, so far, same behavior as the array. So what do you think will happen when we in place back now? So if I step over and add another array, our vector goes to size two. And you can see here that the second operation called a no R constructor and it had the ID of five. We expected that. But what's different is a copy constructor was called for ID four and then a detour was called for ID four destructor. What happened there was the contents of the array changed. We did a buffer resize. So we expanded the buffer. So element zero has ID four. So what happened was from the old array, we copied ID four to the new array and then we destroyed the element with ID4 from the old array. So now our new array is a new heap allocated array. Well, what do you think happens when we add another element to the back of this array? Will we do another buffer resize or did it allocate enough for us to avoid buffer resizes? So let's step over and find out. So as you can see, that operation happened here. We had another new arg constructor called. So we expected this. We made a new thing with ID6. However, we saw two copy constructors for ID4 and ID5. These are the elements that are in positions zero and one. So what happened is again, we had another buffer resize and we constructed the new thing in that new buffer. We copied the old stuff from the other buffer. So ID four and ID five. And then we called the destructors on the elements in the old buffer. So what do you think will happen when we erase an element? So the syntax for erasing STD vector is you give it an iterator at the beginning and then add your indices from that beginning. So we're going to delete the middle array. So what do you think will happen here? Will we have a buffer resize or what? So if we erase, you can see that two operations happened. We called a move operator. So we moved the thing with ID six into the thing that was ID five. So if we effectively deleted ID five and replaced it with what was an ID six, and then we detoured ID six. So ID six was at the end of our array. 
our array was four, five, and then six. And so if we inspect it, now we can see that it goes four and six, five was removed. Effectively, the difference here is that the standard vector is using move operations to try to optimize, but it is invoking copy constructors and destructors. So we deleted the old thing that we moved, and we moved the element from the end into the center. So what is the difference between T-Array and STD vector? T-Array is not really calling your copy and move constructors. It is doing that silently, which is a philosophical difference that might result in better performance, right? We're not invoking all those destructors. We're not invoking all those copy constructors. We're not spending time invoking all the copy constructors and move constructors. But what happens when we add some more to the end of that? So if I go down here, add that. Actually, let's keep this organized and move these up here. So let's build that. All right, so now I've added these in. I've stepped over where we had added and then removed the third. Let's see what happens when we keep adding and cause a buffer resize. So if we can place one, we get a new constructor again. Our array max is four, so our array number is three. Step over, we're now at the maximum four. Again, just new our constructors so far. And when we step one more, we'll add one more and cause a buffer resize. So what happened when the buffer resize happened? We went from four to 22, but we did not see any move constructors or copy constructors. So that is a fundamental difference between vector and array. So if we do the same thing for the vector, find place, we just got a new org because now we actually have enough buffer space, I suppose, to prevent a buffer resize. But then we immediately buffer resized again and had a bunch of copy constructors. So we had a bunch of copy constructors copying from the old array and then copying it into the new array, and then we delete from the old array. You can see that the standard vector is just doing a whole lot more by default than the T array does. The T array doesn't even bother copying over, it just kind of silently resizes the buffer, which could be a detriment if you're expecting that behavior. But at runtime, this is probably a pretty good optimization for a game because we in generally just want to copy structs around. But the STD vector is doing things where it is copying and destructing. So proper cleanup, but at a performance cost that you might not want in a game. And so there's probably some other differences between STD vector and T-Ray, but this is a pretty philosophical difference in how they should behave. And it's worth noting that you shouldn't just expect your T STD vectors to convert over to T-Rays when working in Unreal. And I don't recommend actually using std vector in Unreal because this is outside of the ecosystem. TRA is supported in the scripting and everything, and you should be sticking with TRA where possible. There might be some code you have to bring in from a third party where you have to use std vector, but where possible, use TRA.